Hello again everyone and welcome back to The Witcher 2. We are back here in King Fortress camp and I'm in my camera down at the bottom right, the bottom right, uh, what the hell did I try and say? Bottom right hand corner of the screen. <laughs> Uh, because I was in the way of the map last time, so, but, yeah, I'm, so it's probably a good idea that I'm down here now, so, hi. Um, so, we, last episode, we did obviously reacquaint ourselves with the lore, etc., and we did also, um, run into a new boy of the Crinkford Reavers, and we said that we basically decided to encourage him to don his arm, which I think is a good idea, personally, because... Going into battle in your shirt and pants, probably not going to go too well for you. No matter whether you want to have, no matter, no matter whether you want to fleece your your, you know, pals for or, or, or the knights for money or anything, doesn't matter. Going going into battle with a shirt, not going to work. So so I'm glad we did that, and I'm hoping that might have had the effect of potentially saving his life. I hope, anyway. Any advice from a veteran? On the walls? Don't die. Hey, wasn't it you who defeated the Grand Master and put down the rebellion in Vizima? That would be me. Hey, wasn't it you who defeated the Grand Master and put down the rebellion in Vizima? You went to the siege tower. All right, so what's through here? Also, oh, we got another platoon that's being trained up. Bloomba. Oh, I will. Don't worry. Wait, is there two people called Bloomba? There is two. There's two people called Bloomba. Any advice from a veteran? Any advice from a veteran? There's a there's a lot of troops here, by the way. This is this is going to be a pretty full scale assault, isn't it? This this is the exact kind of battle I love. Who the hell's this dude? Strong arm. Can I interest you in a worthy cause? He's randomly flexing in the middle of the camp. Support. What's the cause? He's got a bit of a beer belly as well. A veterans fund for former fighting men of need. Uh-huh. Found anyone gullible enough to fall for that? Ha! <laughs> There's nothing to fall for. It's just some arm wrestling. Arm wrestling? Yeah, right. Arm wrestling? You put down some coin and we wrestle. Win and the pot is yours. Lose and... <laughs> well, the coin goes to the fund. Care to test your strength? Let's do it, why not? I'll bet two, I suppose? It's obviously a low wager. Keep the indicator in the yellow field. If the yellow field reaches the left end of the bar, you lose. Reaches the right end, you win. Ah, so the, so the closer it gets to the right hand side, the harder it is to keep it inside. But we did it. That was not bad. We did it first well, time. That's some strength you've got in that arm of yours. Well, I am a I am a witcher, so you know. Greetings. I haven't played dice poker in a while. Oh, so this oh, is like walking. Oh, not dice poker. You don't forget how to do it unless you're uh, drunk. Roll a few rounds with me. Why not? I remember. I remember being very annoyed with dice poker in the uh, first game. Just how con consistent. Just how very often, like, people would get perfect rolls for exactly what they need. Right. Let's roll the dice then. How do I roll? How do I roll? Oh, you just throw it down. Oh, okay. Uh, so, so do I have to pick dice to re-roll? I can't remember the hands. We've got five, two, six, two, four. Um, we'll... Wait, what? What happened there? <laughs> oh, I I I, I thought I asked to I thought I asked to reroll. Okay. We'll we'll try that again. I'm trying to understand what the hell just happened. So we've got two. So we've got four twos. That's really good. Oh, so you have to highlight it. Okay. Well, I'll just reroll that one. Get another two, maybe. No, we didn't. But 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 we got four two, so we should we should. Yeah, nice. Certainly haven't forgotten how to play. Good. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, dice, 
gambling makes, makes me sneeze. Orange oil, iron claw, iron or iron claw, iron or cloth. Right. So those are the mini games which you're probably going to be able to play in this game. That's like a little introduction, I'm guessing. Okay, that's fine. There's something in this crate. Iron or am amethyst dust. Amethyst dust sounds weirdly valuable. Probably isn't, but you know. Shrooms as well. Can be some shrooms. More shrooms. More plants. We're going to do a lot of harvesting, aren't we? Quick fall test to victory! He waits near the machine. No reason to go in here. Care for a shot before you enter the siege tower? He waits near the machine. Right. You're the one who crushed Salamandra. That's me. Single witcher is worth the whole puzzle, they say. No, no passage. Okay. Hey. One of you who defeated the Grand Master and put down the rebellion in Vizine. Look at those trebuchets go. Any advice from a veteran? A beautiful day for battle. One of you who defeated the Grand Master. They're not excellent. They're asking for a test. Of their I am no warrior, sir. I must admit, I prefer to joust verbally or with a pen. The emissary of peace that I am. Hogwash! You're the emissary of the white flame dancing on the graves of his foes. The Emperor of Nilfgaard, who spared no blood conquering over a dozen sovereign realms. As you told. Thus bringing them laws, culture, and peace above all. So, so am I right to understand that these trebuchets are firing manure at, uh, at, the, at the walls? And that's probably like it's in an attempt to demoralize them. They do have blisters as well, which is clearly will not fire manure. They'll fire something considerably more deadly. Right. Finally, traitors of the realm boil tar on the walls while you dally with the royal advisor. Uh, excuse me. Can I assist you, sire? That's, we mount an assault that's Tris today, Merigal. and you'll be at my side. Follow me, gentlemen. Let's not keep the traitors waiting. Whoa! I thought you said we were out of Sir, range. You said we were exactly. out of range. That was a ballista, Excellency. Its arms strengthened with bronze plates and strung with horsehair. It can propel heavy bolts up to a mile away. A deadly and very costly weapon. Well, can you. An experienced crew can cock and release two bolts each minute. Yet it has one flaw. Your Grace, please take cover. The recoil of the arms is so strong upon firing um, that the weapon shifts. It simply cannot hit the same spot twice. Ah, I had no idea your grace was nice. a learned military engineer. I'm not. I gave the Baroness those ballistae two years ago for her birthday. <laughs> this man's an expert. What say you, Excellency, of men who live in spite of such wounds? And what say you, your grace, of soldiers who inflict them? Those who did this live Oh no my more. god! Jesus Christ, look at that man! That man has been through Last some hell! I wish to converse with you once the storm of battle has subsided. Forgive me, Excellency. Certainly, Emissary. I the royal court as soon as possible. Might I know why? Too often they take me for someone I'm not. What do they call you, soldier? Wait! You served with me at Brennan during our foray into the Pontar Valley. Norman Sadel. Still an arbalist? Yes, sir. Fight has not been kind to me. Ha! Norman Sador, for your years of faithful service to the Crown, I appoint you Decurion of the Arbalists. Onwards, gentlemen. No reason to dawdle. Voltes is a real man of the people, isn't he? Carefully aim the ballista at your target and press X to release the ball. Well, so you can actually use a ballista if you wanted to. You look safe. Everything all right? First to fight! First to die! Well, I regret going this way. I'm just curious to see what, what there is down here. This is just back... That's just nothing over there. Okay. 
So we're actually able to able to use the ballista then. Because that sounds kind of fun. I'm not gonna lie. Forgive my candor, just the but uh, I must ask, what fate awaits the royal bastards when they're my children? If I hear bastard one more time, someone will die painfully. Oh, your grace, forgive me. But the laws of succession are irrefutably clear. Piss on the laws. I'll change them if need be. Above all, I'll not allow a band of treacherous barons to use my children as their banner. Your Majesty is entirely within his rights. Adder is dead. And I have no other children. I see. Oh, so Adder, Adder died in this... Uh, this in conversation this, is over, what, In this uh, Please plot string, I guess. Tent. I can't remember whether we killed Adder or not in the first Black game. In I think it was an option. What has the world come to? Nothing would make me happier than returning his shriveled head to Emir in a sack. But Triss Merigold insisted I be patient and courteous. Was I? Uh, not quite, sire. Not really. I actually saw his accidents as well. But that'll be our secret. Ha! <laughs> you brought your sense of humor along. Have you learned anything about the assassin? He could have been a witcher. Yeah. Triss did an autopsy. It's possible he was a witcher. A witcher? What have I ever done to the plowing witchers? Anything more? He had no medallion, but that doesn't mean anything. Many in your shoes would have withheld that information. After the battle, Triss will report to me. For now, I wonder if me telling traitors. him that will have any consequences. Where are you aiming, imbecile? Soldier! Spyglar! What is going on up there? The gods! Count at you, very! Catch, Witcher! Aim for the road with a red plume. Not six months ago, he swore eternal friendship to me. <laughs> Quickly! How much higher? Oh, do we actually have to have to direct this? Oh, I see him. Yeah. Oh, we actually have to. The. There. Two and a half degrees. Ah! ah! Man ducked. Did we hit the bastard? He ducked. Damn it! We'll get him on the walls. Follow me, Witcher. I wonder, I wonder if it was actually possible to hit him. Does that? Does I feel like I am quite well there? But apparently, I must have overshot it. There's a lot of little things which are interesting. I mean, I'm, I'm intrigued to see how they how they actually have an effect on how how this sort of battle's going to play out. Well, how the general game's going to play out actually, with uh, me being honest with Voltest about the potential assassin being a Witcher. So we are heading up the siege oh, towers the after, as the slaves no, push the. Uh, I'm prepared to forgive Louisa. Push the wheels. All she need do is to kneel before her king. Very noble of you. Are you mocking me? Never mind. I'm certain Louisa will realize her mistakes. Besides, children should have a mother. I'm lost. It's quite simple. Louisa and I had a bit of a tiff. She made demands I could not fulfill. Understand? I think so. Count Echeverry and others immediately intervened, all noble, all sympathetic. They claimed the evil king would take the children. They would protect them, even place them on the throne. And the Baroness was duped. A motherly love used. In truth, they desire privileges that would weaken the throne. And Voltes will not be having that. And a long road at Chitzow. I've got anything more in the journal that that we didn't read last time? Uh, oh, King Foltest. Foltest most certainly still harbored feelings for his former lover and decided to save the children that were the fruit of his affair. Of this affair, he feared they would otherwise become trump cards in the game of politics, tools of intrigue. Once Foltest made a decision, no one and nothing could could stand in his way.
Right. So basically the situation is, is that Fall Test had kids with 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 Louisa Lavalette and and Louisa is now reveled essentially and is trying to use their kids as 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 a as a banner of kind of legitimacy, I guess. And Fall Test is now trying to quell this uh, rebellion, I suppose. Oh my lord! Okay. We need to get on the walls right now before this goes completely wrong. Right, so we are ready and willing to go. Baltas has a hell of a way with words. Are we going to have a massive march on the walls right now? Voltest is not messing around, by the way. He's front and center. Here we go. How is this going to play out? Are we finally going to get our first taste of proper in-game combat? Ooh, okay. That tower was ridiculous. We're back in it here. It was designed to break the rebels' morale. A bunch With of Roche. lords and lordlings took a ride to then pompously stride on top of the walls while the real army fought and died below them in the shit and piss filled streets. If years of service have taught me anything, it's that the highborn don the best costumes and get the best vantage points, whether at a ball or in battle. But it's not the time for that kind of jousting, Witcher. Continue your story. So the assault. Things went relatively smoothly after we came out of that town. I'm guessing you can potentially skip part of this prologue Lavalette. if you wanted to. Arian Lavalette. Okay, so this is another of the Lavalette clan. Whoa! Oh my god, I actually have a military uniform all of a sudden. That was that was a that's a twist. Oh, are we, are we ready to rock and roll? Yes, we are. Ooh, I. He's saying that this went relatively smoothly. I mean, it doesn't look like it's going relatively smoothly. However, once Geralt and Faltest get involved, it's a different matter entirely. Protect King Faltest. We shall do. We shall do just that. Lavalette soldier. We are slashing them down, okay. Nope. And nope. Onward. Right, we got this. Lord Suxon, you shall push for the center aisle and bring down that gate. It's a good day to kill, your majesty. Follow me, gentlemen. Fort Tamiria. Fort Tamiria, indeed. Let's crush these rebels. Lord Swan. You and your men shall follow me. We must capture or otherwise deal with Arian Lavalette in order to break the defender's morale. Yes, Your Grace. Geralt, gentlemen, follow me for the glory. For the glory. So that's a new journal entry, Arian Lavalette. We'll have a little look at that once we are able to. Oh God, archers! Archers are back, mopping God down, my guys. I forbid you to die like imbeciles. Got perfectionist achievements. They've taken a good position, the bastards. That's a lot if of this arrows. Persists, they'll pick us off like ducks, and I'm no duck. Any ideas? Am I gonna have to go around? Indeed. Defeat the blisters, defenders, and prepare to launch a bolt. Cool. So we can do that. Uh, what was that achievement we just got? Let me let, let, bear with me. Let me just um, kill ten fours in a row without losing any any vitality. Fantastic. So the journal entry on Ariane. Um, right. The siege tower reached the walls and spewed forth spewed forth its load of Tamerian soldiers and knights. The battle was joined. Faltest fought in the vanguard. The Witcher fought by his side, protecting the king. Led by these two, the soldiers moved towards the nearest tower, securing the walls one section at a time. Faltest assault lost momentum at one of the castle towers. The army that had raged like a hurricane until now suddenly stopped at the barricade the defenders had erected at the tower's entrance. There was no way to approach it, as lavalette arrows rained down from above like snowflakes at Yuletide. 
Luckily, in the nearby square stood a ballista that the defenders had failed to position on the walls. Geralt spotted the war machine, decided to use it to destroy the barricade. First, however, he had to overcome the soldiers guarding it. So we might actually have a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a task now. RN Lavalette. Oh, we got um, we have one on Shillard Fitz Ursland as well. Many northern kings appear in this story, rash and thoughtful, amorous and frigid, brave and cowardly. The reader should easily see that should their crowns be removed and a pitchfork sword and a bunch of bills or a goat apple given in a scepter's stead, they would be human as we are. The same, however, could not be said of the Emperor of Nilfgaard, the white flame dancing on the barrows of his enemies, whose shadow fell over all the events I've written down. In this case, that shadow was represented by Shillard Fitz Ursulin, a consummate diplomat who had started more than one war, only to end it accepting homage from the defeated. Oh. And then Ariane Lavalette. Baroness Lavalette's eldest child, Ariane was beyond all doubt her, her and the old Baron's son. Raised to be a knight, he sought to uphold the virtues of his, of his state, valuing courage and valour and striving by his every deed to embody them. He must have felt extreme discomfort by the conflict that engulfed him as, it, as at its roots lay his mother's and family's honour, pitted against the widely discussed rumours of a love affair between the Baroness and King Fortest. Though the situation was dire, the young knight valiantly commanded the defence of his family's castle, intending not to give an inch of ground. Okay, so we're going to end this episode here for now, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Next episode, we'll attempt to go and take that ballista and destroy the barricade that is currently preventing us from advancing any further. So, uh, yeah, thanks once again for watching, guys. Hope you all have enjoyed. If you have, then please do like, comment, subscribe, and share. And I shall catch you all in the next episode of The Witcher 2. Thanks again, guys. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.